Hello YouTube, this is Dozer bringing you an updated tank prism deck list following my appearance at the Road to Nationals in North Carolina on Saturday, July 30th or 31st. I can't remember which one it was, but uh, basically uh, this is the deck that I took more or less and I made a couple tweaks to it to improve the list, but I uh, ended up doing very well at the event and wanted to show you how the deck is progressing. So. Uh, this will be Tank Prism 3.0. So, of course, we have Prism here. Uh, again, just like last time, I'm not going to go through what every card does, if we've seen them before. I'm just going to focus on the, uh, the cards that are new and explain the reasoning behind them. But I'm not going to go into the specifics on what each card does. So, Prism, uh, we're going to be running Iris of Reality as well as Luminaris. Um, I managed to make enough room in the deck list to fit the extra weapon and a couple more equipments. Um, the reason for that is that in matchups like Bravo, you're never really going to get Luminar's value due to the Dominate and him killing all of our auras. So being able to swing for four damage um, by only having one aura active is going to come up a lot more often, and so we're going to get more value out of that thanks to the amount of blues that we run. So, uh, but otherwise, Luminar's is your go-to. I would pretty much only run Iris against Bravo. Um, further, we have uh, two different gloves. We've got Null Rune and Dreamweavers. Um, both of these are very good. Um, obviously, uh, Null Rune will be the preferred choice in matchups where we have to take arcane damage to protect our shields, but otherwise, Dreamweavers will just give us more value against matchups that don't do any arcane, such as Katsu, you know, Dorinthia, things like that. We can at least save it for a point where we can do um, one guaranteed uh, attack with something important. So we run both of those. Uh, and then naturally we run Footsteps, Vestige, and Halo. Um, all of these are you know, key cards, and using the uh, Halo combo for card draw and get things into soul and getting the value out of the Vestige is really important. Uh, something I've been testing is using um, the Vestige to block to keep Spectral Shields alive. And what I found is while that can be valuable sometimes, uh, you really want to try and hold your Vestige until you get your Tomes off, because otherwise you'll never really be able to get value out of your Tomes or your Halo. So you want to make sure you're using the Halo before you block with your Vestige ever, and um, also trying to use your Tomes before then as well. But those are the equipments, pretty standard. We're just adding a couple of extras, and um, now we can get into the main deck list. So to start out... <clears throat> We'll talk about the Heralds. So, uh, three blue Rebirth. Uh, again, I tend to run mostly just blue Heralds in the tank prism list. Um, blue Protections uh, at three. Uh, Ravages of three of them. And three blue War Tune. So, we run these 12 blue heralds for the light pitch and for the um, beam blue, as well as the fact that they block three. They're very, very good cards. Uh, and then on top of that, running the yellow war tunes as well, uh, because they give us an outlet for our yellow pitch while allowing us to attack wide with our spectral shields, even if they pop our phantasm. That's the main reason we run them. Um, also, they pitch and, and do everything else that we need. Um, beyond those... Naturally, we're going to run three Erudition, and we're going to run three Judgment. So the reason we run Judgment um, is just for the chain matchup, basically. Although you can side them in against other matchups, too, where you just need more big attacks. Um, and even against stuff like Dorinthia and Katsu, it's a pretty good card. Uh, and that's going to be all of the Heralds. That's all the Light Illusionist attack actions. Um, and so we'll clean those up here. Uh, there's never been a time where I've been playing where I felt like I needed the reds or the yellows of the Heralds, um, except for the War Tune. Uh, what we have here is perfectly serviceable. Uh, then we'll talk about the auras. So as far as auras, I'm running one Ode to Wrath, three Genesis, three Merciful Retribution, and uh, two Arclight Sentinel. Um, as far as the Light Illusionist auras, these are really the only ones that I'm finding success with uh, running. Parable of Humility is a interesting and useful card. The problem is is that against the field of the meta, it doesn't give us a lot of value unless it's left unchecked. And even then, um, 
we would rather be playing other auras or playing other cards. So Genesis as a three of even feels a little too much at times. I could see taking one Genesis away and giving a second Ode to Wrath just because of how many generics there are in this deck. Genesis isn't going to be hitting every time. So a lot of times I've found that uh, I'm not actually getting the full value out of Genesis, but uh, it is a very threatening card, and if it sticks around, it does provide a lot of value over time. So it's still good to run in the matchups where it's useful. Arclight Sentinel down to two because uh, normally you only want to resolve it once in a game, and um, it's really hard to use it against Bravo, who's normally the best target to use it for. So... Um, and that's because if he threatens the dominate, you have to choose basically right then, do you want to arc light or not? And they can simply choose to note those and save their card for next turn and really just keep you in the exact same position, but now you're down in arc light and you didn't put out any pressure. So it's a useful card, but uh, two of is basically the most you'll ever want in any given game. Uh, Ode to Wrath is a great card as a payoff, and uh, Merciful is always good to have access to. Uh, so those are the auras. Uh, from there, we can talk about the Illusionist cards. So I run three Prismatic Red, of course, and then we run three Prismatic Yellow. So the biggest thing that I was missing in my Road to Nationals tournament uh, was just more Spectral Shields. There was definitely a time in both of the grindy matchups that I played in that I really could have benefited from having a bit more access to these. Uh, so I bumped it up to three Yellows as well as the three Reds. I'm kind of revisiting the original idea where we had two of the yellows. Uh, three yellows feels good. Um, beyond that, uh, three Phantasmoclasm. Uh, being able to mess up our opponent's hand is incredibly good, and attacking for nine is very threatening, especially in the grind game. And as the uh, game drags on, you can block for six and then attack for nine. Uh, that's very powerful. And um, the only thing you have to remember when playing this card is that if the opponent um, gets a 6 to the bottom of their deck, remember that you've just given them a card that they wanted to use, but they'll get it later. So since this is a deck that tends to go into the long game, you want to remember that you gave them that card back and that you will have to see it again at some point. So don't forget about that. Then 3 Celestial Cataclysm. Um, I still am of the mind that you don't want to play this card unless it's a really, really late game scenario where you have tons of cards in soul. Most of the time, you should be using this to block or pitch. And then, um, even in matchups that aren't Prism, you want to make sure that sometimes you can run this card, mainly just for the block, and then you can use it sometimes. But it's not something you want to focus on getting off. Beyond that, uh, three Tome of Divinity. This card is really good. Like, it's really nuts when you resolve it. Um, but it can be hard to get it to proc in this list sometimes effectively without setting up the the late game uh, combo where you uh, stack your deck with your pitch to make sure that you have your tomes. So just be aware that if you can activate a tome off of a soul shield or off of a merciful trigger, it's normally worth it just to get that extra card into your hand and come back stronger the next turn. Uh, so three tome and then uh, two glisten yellow. Um, these are incredibly powerful in certain matchups. And being able to sneak through that lethal damage with the Spectral Shield, giving things go again uh, if you pitch a yellow, and having a threat stick around that you can poke with every turn for free is very powerful. So two yellow glisten for sure. Although you don't want to run it into every matchup because it doesn't block. Uh, beyond that, uh, three Soul Shield. card's incredible. It helps you turn on your Tome. It helps you turn on... Um, a lot of things, and it's just an effective way to get rid of your uh, no blocks, all of your two caught or your yellow pitch instants. So, Soul Shield is a very crucial card at getting value out of our hands um, throughout the game. And then beyond that, we run a host of defense reactions. So, three red fate for scene, three red sink below, and then three yellow sink below as well. Um, so I've cut it down to 12 Defense Reacts. The yellow Vapor scenes were really kind of underperforming, and so I replaced them with the yellow War Tunes from the original list. And um, these have been working just fine. I haven't felt the lack of the yellow Vapor scenes. Um, and in fact, this is better positioned to deal with Command and Conquer because now we have a bit more flexibility in blocking with threes out of our hand rather than our Defense Reacts. So uh, this just works plenty good for us. Uh, and beyond that, um, I'm currently running 
three lunging press. Um, this card has been performing exceptionally well for me. Um, being able to pump our eruditions, our pursuit of knowledge, and our judgments over the edge to make sure we get our on-hit effects is really crucial for zero resource. It's very hard for opponents opponent to play around this card. And uh, it pitches blue and blocks too, so it's an all-around good card. And um, I mean, if it pitched yellow and block three, it'd be amazing. It'd be just absolutely insane, but as it is, it's still good. And um, the only thing I will recommend is that if you have it in Arsenal and your opponent doesn't seem to be giving you opportunities to um, to make good use of it, so like, let's say you attack the Pursuit of Knowledge and they decide to take it, I recommend just using the Lunging Press to get it out of Arsenal uh, and just get that one extra damage through. It's normally not worth holding it in Arsenal because we normally need to put our defense reactions there or our, um, our instance, and if we clog up our Arsenal like that, uh, we're going to be really sad as the game drags on because a lot of the times we're attacking special shields and you can't pump those with lunging press. So make sure that you are keeping aware of that and don't let this clog up your arsenal for the whole game. Um, but it is very good otherwise. Uh, beyond that, I run three Raging Onslaught Red. Uh, this card is mainly useful in the Prism Mirror for the ability to pop Phantasms, but it's also a decent card against Bravo where we can pitch a blue and swing for seven. Um, and it blocks for three, so I mean it's never bad to have, and in certain matchups where they're going to pop our phantasms, it's just an efficient um, attack that we can do. And then Pursuit of Knowledge, we run three of those. Um, this card's incredible for Prism, it's basically another copy of Erudition. Um, it doesn't have phantasms, so they can't pop it, and being able to attack for four is a really awkward number, especially if they block with a three and a one, and then you lunging press on top of it, it's going to be really crazy when you get that extra intellect and that extra card draw and be able to come back even stronger the next turn. Um, so three Pursuit of Knowledge, <clears throat> three Raging Onslaught, red. Um, and then beyond that, we're going to get into the last couple cards of the deck list. We've got three Whispers of the Oracle Yellow. Um, I am still very big on this card, even though a lot of times it feels like you don't get the full value out of it. But when you do use it to dig through your deck further to get to the cards you need or to set up your next turn or to even just block something like a Bolton without blocking that attack action, it's very, it feels very good when I have it. I've never felt like this needed to be another card. Um, although if you wanted to cut it, I could see you doing so for something like a yellow Illuminate. That would definitely be a decent replacement or even a blue Illuminate. Um, although I have been feeling a bit yellow starved um, in certain hands, so I would say you'd probably want to keep these as yellows in the deck list uh, and probably make them yellow illuminates because that card is pretty good at the end of your turn um, and is light. So it's always good to have those. Um, but I'm still going to be on Whispers for a while here. I really like using them, and I think they're very good. And then finally, we're going to run uh, one Energy Potion. Uh, again, it's just very useful to turn on our Halo without losing a card. And um, it also helps us play our other, all of our other cards flexibly when we need to. And it can pay for a soul shield as well. Um, it's just extremely flexible and it's great to have as a one of. And then two remembrance. So these are basically here for the grind game. Um, they're very strong against decks where they're going to be blocking us out and popping our phantasms. We can get our eruditions back, our phantasmoclasms back, or our pursuit of knowledge is back. And um, even against the Prism Mirror, we can put back our uh, Celestial Cataclysms or our um, Raging Onslaughts and just have a lot more gas to go with based on what we need in the deck. So that is the 80. Um, we have 77, well, no, we have 73 cards in the main board uh, and then seven equipments. Um, basically, as far as the main board is concerned, I would say... Uh, your best bet would be to side out Raging Onslaughts, Remembrance. Um, the auras are not always good, so you want to keep those on the sideboard until you know you're in a matchup that you want to use them. I think um, that goes for the yellow Prismatics as well. That's normally a grind game type card. Um, the defense reacts we want to use in every matchup. Um, Tomes, we want to use in every matchup. Glisten, not in every matchup. Celestial Cataclysm, not in every matchup. Uh, the blue, all the heralds we want to have in basically every matchup. 
The only times I'd consider cutting them is cutting judgments. Um, when you're not up against chain, uh, you might want to run something else. And then, uh, you know, all these defense reactions are good here. And normally, I would say the lunging press goes in for every matchup just because of the pitch, the uh, ability to synergize with our per, um, pursuit of knowledge and our eruditions, uh, especially because the the hidden value of that card is the fact that um, if you attack with your pursuit of knowledge and they're going to block with a card and their armor uh, and you still get the on hit anyway, you're just wearing them down so that in the late game when you attack with yet another pursuit of knowledge or you're attacking with a uh, an erudition at that point, you are basically just guaranteeing that uh, you can just burn through all their armor so that late game when you're pitching your eruditions and you're um, using or you're putting them back in with remembrance for late game that you're able to actually resolve the erudition draw and get that that value. So lunging press is definitely something I would consider keeping the main board. Unless you're up against Prism, then I think you don't actually want the Lunging Press because the ability for her to make Spectral Shields and easily block out your um, Erudition with Footsteps plus a card and a, spect a Spectral Shield or um, even the Pursuit of Knowledge, the same thing. Um, it's very hard for you to actually land on hits, so the one extra damage isn't going to really matter all that often, and so you'd probably want to run a different card um, than, than the Lunging Presses in the matchup. But yeah, so that's the main board over here. Just to go over it again, the sideboard um, is normally going to be the energy potion. Um, like I don't run energy potion versus chain, for instance, because um, it doesn't block. Uh, Raging Onslaught, Celestial Cataclysm. These are cards that I tend to run for the Prism Mirror almost exclusively. Um, Herald of Judgment against chain is great. Otherwise, you can slot it in versus other things. Glisten and Yellow Prismatics normally are good against the grind game, um, like Katsu and certain types of Prism. And then the Auras generally are good against uh, Warrior. Um, I would say Guardian, you want to have the Auras for sure. Uh, Remembrance you want to have against those grindy matchups like Katsu and Bravo. Um, but like Dorinthia, you should run the Auras. You should run it versus Bolton. Um, Arclight Sentinel is kind of just a... A meta call for you. If you think they're going to run the time snaps and the time skippers, I would keep them and then decide whether or not you want to run the ALS if you think they're going to be running the counter. If they run the counter and you don't put the ALS into your deck, you're basically punishing them for accounting for it. And it's kind of just like a mind game. Uh, you have to just try and rock, paper, scissors to see if your opponent decides to take the time skippers. And so most of the time, what I would recommend is just having one ALS in the deck. Um, if you're not sure, because then you can hold on to it, you can show it to them, um, and uh, depending on whether or not you put one or both in, or a third one, if you fit it into the list somehow by tweaking it, um, you'll get a lot of value out of making them play around it, even if um, you don't actually have it in your hand, or if it's not accessible, or if you pitched your only one, etc. So having one accessible in any given matchup is never going to be bad, but it's definitely, it can bite you in the butt if you... Uh, draw into it at the wrong time. So just keep that in mind. Um, everything else is pretty standard. I think Merciful Retribution can, can go into most matchups. And um, yeah, that's the deck list. Um, again, I went 3-2 and two in Swiss at my road to Nationals. Um, I beat a chain in round one. Then in round two, I played against a Katsu, Control Katsu. We went all the way down to the last uh moments of the round we literally had like 20 seconds left when it ended and um we would have tied if i used als at the last round at the last turn but um we would have both lost based on how the rules work so um i just ended it by taking the loss because it was just going to grind out and it was it was going to be really hard to finish it out if i had the yellow prismatic shields it would have gone a lot better for me and um I definitely regretted not bringing those in that matchup. So that was one of the losses there. That guy ended up going 4-1 and one and being in the final four of the tournament. Um, my third round was against Chain again. Beat Chain for the second time at the event. Um, again, the deck performed very well. I sided out all of my no blocks, basically. I basically just put in everything that blocked, everything that gained me health, and I just tried my best to hold on and just make them die to blood dead and losing all their cards. Um, round four, I played against the Prism Mirror, uh, and that Prism played very well. He had a very similar list to this one. 
um, except he ran Illuminates instead of some of the defense reactions, although he did run Sinks, and he ran the Yellow Prismatics, which, uh, as I've said before, in the Prism Mirror, the person who gets the most Prismatic Shields tends to win, and um, it definitely was hard to come back in the game once he had like a wall of shields, because none of my Heralds are going to get their own hits ever, and um, he can just ping me and kill all my shields. And it's, it's really hard to come back from that, unless you have Merciful really early with some shields. So definitely run the Yellow Prismatics in the Prism Mirror, I would say. And then in my fifth round, I played against Bolton. Um, I beat the Bolton pretty um, handily. It was a close match, um, but the Lunging Press for Lethal was uh, very impactful. And um, based on my record, I should have gone into the top eight. Uh, there was a technical error in the system, and so the guy I beat in round five, who ended up with a 2-3 record, got in over me with a 3-2 record, where both the people that I lost to had 4-1 records. So it felt bad to kind of not get a chance to compete in top eight, even though my record was much better than the person who got my spot. But um, it is what it is, and I was happy to compete anyway and get to see everyone and just have fun at the event. And the most important thing is not whether or not you win or lose the whole event, but how well the deck performs. And um, in this case, the deck performed splendidly. I mean, I could not ask, have asked for it to perform better, really. Um, it did everything it had set out to do. And now with the tweaks that I've made here, um, by upping some ratios, downing some other ratios, um, I do think this deck is poised to do very well in a competitive event. Um, or, you know, and you can still tweak it based on what the, you think the meta is going to be. But um, the deck has legs. It's very potent. And um, if you take it to an event and have practiced it enough to know how to pilot it, I can guarantee you that you'll have a good experience and that you'll be able to put up a very competitive fight against the field of all the other meta decks. So thanks for sticking around and watching this 3.0 Prism Tank deck profile. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next video and hope you take care. Peace.